compresses and then and, and it's got all that pent up energy when you open the tool for the final flow you'll 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 get a, a big surge and a lot a, a big strong blow sooner where where compared to the initial flow you're, you're, uh, you've, you've got mud down there the test starts out with just the mud in the annulus and so it takes it a while you know it takes it a while to uh, push on through and get get everything cleaned up but um, so there's just a little picture of the, that's that's just the the bucket and the bubbles there and you know we for for those of you that haven't been out on test you know it's it's very simple simple uh, way that we try to determine what's happening on a test and we we just take a five gallon bucket fill it with water and then we have like a little quarter inch pipe and we have a little mechanism that fastens onto the side of the bucket and and depending on how fast the air is being pushed up the drill pipe by the fluid or the gas coming into the tool uh, we can we can push that further and further down into the bucket and so so uh, you know for those of you that are you know unfamiliar with testing when I talk about a blow in the bucket that's that's all it is of course for you that have all of you that are test testing people this is all old news um, here's here's one uh, bottom bucket two minutes went to a real strong blow f final flow strong blow immediately a lot of gas in the pipe very 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 slight amount of fluid uh, you know big big pressures here uh, you know it's a T fairly tight zone and and you know you don't you don't have a lot of flow pressures here but but uh, shut-ins really really built up nice and you also also can see a difference between the initial and the final here kind of a kind of a drop and we'll talk about that more later uh, here's another one uh, real high skin factor here oh another thing that I want to point out here these these curves here this is a temperature curve we have electronic recorders one inside and one outside and uh, this, this, this other curve here is actually the temperature. And you'll notice that when the, this is, there's some little small gas test here and uh, the, the pressure drop of the gas coming through the zone, uh, the, cooling, the cooling effect of the gas is, is evident here. You know, see how the pressure falls off during the flows and then, and then spikes back up during the shut-ins. And then, then, of course, as the, as the tool is being pulled out of the hole, the, the mud's cooler as you get closer to surface and so that's temperature on the right scale and pressure on the left scale here. Here's a really tight gas test. Notice how these uh, shut-in curves look just like knife blades. See how they're not even even beginning to to break over. Uh, recovery 35 foot of mud, 600 foot of gas in the pipe. And uh, you know I've had people say well I've got I've got 1,250 pounds of of, uh, of shut-in pressure here. How can I only get 35 foot of mud? Well, that's that's the fact that that you have limited permeability, and and uh, when the when the tool is closed, there's nowhere for that pressure to go except into the pressure recorders. When the tool is open, the if if the zone had permeability, it would go ahead and contribute. And uh, the fact that it can only you know, kick in 600 foot of gas and 35 foot of mud during this whole flow period tells you that there's that there's either skin or a limited amount of permeability. Something is prohibiting that zone from, uh, you know, from from filling up the pipe with with something. Here's a zone. Somebody's somebody else is is looks like pro somebody else an offsetting operator or an offsetting well has has got got here first. Uh, notice. Uh, you know, kind of a similar recovery to the one before, but uh, you know, very, very, very low pressures, and it almost looks like there's something here going on where there's maybe uh, another zone that's that's a real tight zone that's starting to build up out of out of that little that little depleted looking shut in there. Um, here's one, uh, and I got a I've got to kind of preface this 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 I had done this. Uh, uh, presentation once in the, in, in in Illinois, uh, a few, and and the people in Illinois they they would just always seem to think like any time you had a strong blow and 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 some some blow on your shut in that you just had to have oil. But you can you can have a big you can have a big water test, 2,300 foot of sulfur water here, and uh, you know excellent looking, you know just a, just one of the pretty probably the, one of the prettiest charts you could ever see there, and. Uh, blow on the shut-ins and and uh, everybody's 
high-fiving at the surface, you know, ready to cash their first oil check until you get to the recovery and it's all, it's all salt water. And, you know, we used to, I know back when I was running a lot of tests, I'd, you know, you'd have something like that and it'd be on the morning tower in the middle of the night and everybody, the doghouse full of investors and then as soon as you broke off the first couple stands and it was water, you look out the doghouse window and all you'd see was taillights. <laughs> I'd always call those taillight tests. <laughs> so anyway, a little, little bit of oil field humor there. Okay, here's, here's one. And, the, and there again, the uh, Illinois people, they, they're a, they're a, they have a little different way of thinking, but a lot of them like to just run one flow and one shut-in. And here's a, here's a test where they did just that. A couple things I want to point out here. See that, see that break in the action, or the, the, the different angle of the flow there? That would be a, a transition between the, the recovery coming up drill callers with their smaller ID versus transitioning, transitioning over into drill pipe with a larger ID and you'll see the, you'll see the slope of your flow change going from, from callers to pipe. But uh, there again, uh, you, know, hard, you know, bottom of the bucket and, and uh, there, you know, what, what how, you know, I, I was trying to preach to these people that you need to run two flows and two shut-ins is, is the purpose of this slide here. So not a really, no, I don't really, very seldom is that done in Kansas, maybe on a, go ahead. So they were just trying to save money, is the reason they did that? They, have they uh, you know, in Illinois, a lot of people do things because that's the way their dad did it. And that, that's just, you know, change comes hard and they, I, I never, never, really, never really got a good, uh, explanation except that's what they wanted to do so uh, here's a just a little blow uh, you know flow and shut in period and 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 I, and I think when you stay and listen to Bill's presentation this afternoon we're we're uh, we're on the same page about you know what kind of times that a person should run and and uh, you know the 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 and people say, well, why do, you, why do we got to run such a short initial flow? And, and my quick and dirty answer, simple answer is, is because that first shut-in is the only time in that zone's life that you're ever going to get a chance to get a virgin pressure. And, and the longer you leave that tool open, you're, you're degrading away from that virgin pressure on a shut-in. And, it, and, it's, and it's like, you know, that's... The, that, that's just it in one sentence. That's the only time in that zone's life that, I mean, you, you, you cannot ever come back again and, and put a virgin pressure there. So this is the only chance that you're ever going to get to do it. And I can tell you from experience that when you do run a short initial flow, you, that, that initial shut-in, it, it, it will jump up and, and flatten out sooner than, than, a, than, than the person that ran, a, like I say, a 30-minute initial flow. Uh, because you, you're because you're you're already drawing down that zone, and so you you know if you need to know what that that initial you know I mean if you, you you know you can take everything, and I think Bill will agree with me. Everything that you do to that zone in that well, you want to benchmark back to that first first shut in on that first after that first initial flow. I mean you've got you got to have that benchmark to go back and see what kind of depletion or anything else about that well. That's that's your that's. So I can't, I can't stress that enough that that's the only time you're ever going to get a chance to do that. So, you know, act accordingly, I guess is all I can say there. And then, and then to go ahead during, your, you know, and whatever time you wanted to run on that initial flow, you know, if you feel like you're neglecting the zone or shorten, shorten yourself, well, go ahead and put that time into that final flow. Put that, put that time in between those two shut-ins and see what happens. See what happens between those two, those two shut-ins because, you know, I mean, if you, you know, if you go out there and you have a, a thousand pounds initial and 800 pounds final, well, something's going on down there. It might be limited. It might be a barrier. It might be something you need to send to Bill Johnson. I don't know, but, but something definitely is strange down there because that, that in a normal zone, the, you shouldn't have a pressure drop like that. But at least you're giving, at least you're, you're putting the zone to the test. You're, 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 you're stressing that zone by putting it, putting that time in between those two. So really you don't, the only thing you want to accomplish during this, the initial flow is just to get that hydrostatic off of the, off of the zone. That's all you, you got to do. And